Hello world. So I'm going to be talking today about a flashlight. It's not this one. No way. It's not this one. No. -uh. Not this one either. It's this here. The Zebra Light H51W. So I was introduced to Zebra Light just from being a, an internet surfer as I am. Um, stumbled upon them probably through candlepowerforums.com or something <coughs> which if you haven't heard of it is one of the best uh, maybe the best flashlight forum out there and I was intrigued because this had pretty much the construction you know it's a hard anodized aluminum it's just like a flashlight except it is a 90 degree facing bezel so it's similar to like some old school lights that kind of had like the, you could turn the top. Um, but I just, I liked the idea of having it mounted like this on your head. So real quick, I want to talk about the beam and the LED and everything. This is the W again, H51W. What that means is that it's a neutral white LED. Um, if you just saw a flash right there, that's because I just screwed it on. Um, I connected the circuit so it'll kind of give a little bleep indicator every time you do that and they're claiming 172 lumens from one double-a cell and I'm gonna go ahead and believe them on that because I've got some other lights here this is the cork tactical single double-a Phoenix E11 um, I think this is like one 105 lumens this is like 120 maybe don't quote me um, but they're definitely not advertised as being as bright as this one and I will vouch or I will prove to you that the H51W is indeed brighter than them and if you want to opt to get the non-neutral white you get a little more added brightness too so main things I like about this light is the user interface the actual how you get to each mode it's incredibly intuitive you can access every mode from it being off more or less so it has three settings low medium high sweet and the beautiful aspect of that is that you're not overly complicated with like you know turning it on having it not be the mode you want or whatever having to f switch through a bunch of different modes not that I'm not a fan of modes but on a headlamp come on let's get real guys uh, so if you want to access low you have to push it but don't let go for I think more than half a second so I'm gonna actually point it at you because it'll be really low so I'm not gonna do a quick tap I'm gonna hold it for kind of a second it'll be like a lazy push so now we're on low and for each low medium and high they've pre-programmed two different brightness settings so this has six potential light output settings that are programmed into it and to access the sub level of each of those so we're on low right now but there's another low that we could get to and to do that you double tap it so now we're on a slightly higher low and this is you know pretty usable if we shut off this little light here you can see that that's like the high low double tap again and we're back to that moonlight this is usually what I keep the low on because I'm hardly ever using low. I'm generally on medium, um, but if I need extra low, it's so nice to be able to just turn this on, not blind everybody, and this will still get you around your tent, your your room at night, that type of thing. One click to go off, assuming that you've had it on for more than a second, I think. So say we want to get to medium. So we're going to go ahead and double tap it. Now, technically you're not getting straight to medium when you do that. You're sifting through high to then get to medium, but no big deal. This is one of the mediums, double click, and now we're on a lower medium. So I prefer the higher setting of medium. It's a good kind of balance between, you can see a lot, but um, you're not draining your battery. Now let's real quick go to the, the Phoenix E11 on low and just look at the color difference I cannot get enough of this light this color like I, that's so blue 
and then ooh, just beautiful coming in. Now to compare, <laughs> I've got an incandescent bulb, pretty much the only light I have left that's incandescent. Um, and actually, let's get to high real quick. High is just a quick tap, very quick tap. Um, and again, double tap it, there's a lower or another high, double tap it again, now we're on the brighter high. So this is the H51, that is the mag light rechargeable, the mag charger. Um, I'll do them in another order now, so mag charger. So honestly the brightness is, I would say that this is probably brighter overall, but it's a much different focal or optic. So the mag charger will definitely throw a beam farther, but it's not at all going to be prettier. Um, this thing I just can't get enough of. So those are the modes. That's how it works. I love it. This button is definitely easy enough to push um, when it's strapped in here on your head. Doesn't do much of a, of a deficit there. One huge point I want to go over is that I had to modify this for it to be perfect. Uh, it is very, very less than perfect right out of the box. Um, they'll give you this little rubber slip. They give you a second one too, a glow-in-the-dark one. That just simply slips right over this. Just has two slots on each side and basically the, the belt feeds through the, the headband. Um, however, I found that because of the weight of this, it kind of wants to tug, pull away from the actual band, and it winds up kind of sagging. It droops. So this thing here will kind of cinch in, and it'll pull itself away from the headband, creating a little bit of a floppiness to it. So you can kind of imagine it's like that instead of being tight up against your head. Uh, definitely a problem. Big old problem that I ran into. So what I did is, you can see two stitch lines there. I just made a loop of fabric. So I looped the fabric through so that it wound up being like this. And then I just stitched both those ends down. So now when I stretch, it pulls that piece tight. 100% fixed, no problems ever here on out. Um, I highly recommend that you not only learn how to sew if you don't know how to, but do this mod if you ever, ever, ever get yourself a zebra light. So that's that's first and foremost right there. I can't emphasize enough how that takes this headlamp system from being something that I wouldn't rely on to something that I can't get enough of. It's in my pocket every day almost, or at least in my backpack. So that's the headband. I mean, it's adjustable. You get the idea. Not too much to go over there. So this here, what else is there to talk about? Um, how about how unbelievably reliable it is? I've dropped it tons of times. I I work at a, a outdoor retailer store, so and we don't sell Zebra Light. And I'm uh, it's Eastern Mountain Sports to be specific. And my boss and all the people training us, they're very, very, very dedicated to making sure that we're hooking our people up with the right products. Which in some senses that means if we don't have the right product for them we're sending them elsewhere um, and that's just the right thing to do so I generally will have this in my bag at work um, and if the right headlamp customer comes along where this would suit their needs better than something we have I will break it out and I'll show them and enlighten them on that and uh, more often than not I'm tossing it on the concrete floor proving to them that this is just way way more durable than any of the plastic cased headlamps that we offer in the store um, so yeah I've had it on, I've dropped it from four plus feet to straight concrete several, several times. Um, you can't really see too many dings, I think there's just one good one right there. Um, but surprisingly durable. Um, it's aluminum, but you can see there's a stainless steel little recessed bezel there, another stainless steel little bezel in there, and I think that really helps to make it so that all those drops I, I introduced to it didn't really do much. Um, so what else do I want to go over here? Oh, um, I have gone 10 plus feet deep underwater with this thing. And it was after years of me already owning it. And I'm not going to lie, water got inside. Um, you know, I was having a little fun with a digital camera that's waterproof. The tough 
Olympus Tough. Um, so I was in my friend's pool at night with this, and we were just having a good old time. And uh, the next morning, <laughs> I didn't touch this light at all. It had been in and out of the water. We hit the bottom of the pool, and uh, I went to go turn it on. It didn't turn on. So I open it up, and sure enough, first thing I see on the battery is a drip of water. And I'm like, no, I just wrecked my favorite headlamp ever. But sure enough, I uh, took the battery out, just wiped it down with some paper towel, and I just let it sit overnight. Next day, pop the battery in. Boom. Good to go. This thing has been soaked. Water was inside. There were drips of water. The battery was wet. Like, it left moisture on my hand when I was holding the battery. So, there's no doubt in my mind that <laughs> these are just unbelievable lights. I've had several other lights that have gotten water in them and have ceased to ever work again. Um, by reputable brands, I'm talking Phoenix, I'm talking... Um, uh, some mag lights I've had that happen to, but either way, H51W by Zebra Light is an unbelievable headlamp system. Um, it does come with a pocket clip. I never used it like that, but it would be kind of cool to be able to clip it to your front pocket or um, say your, you know, pants pocket so that's facing forwards while you're using it. I've just never had to, so the pocket clip is who the heck knows where now. Um, I generally speaking, we'll just have it in here. Um, I'll have it in its usual headlamp configuration. And I'll just do this. It'll just be in my pocket like that. Um, now, yeah, it's, it's, it takes up a little more space than this, but honestly, it, it doesn't affect too much of my, my pocket system. This is just such a good asset to have. Um, yeah. Zebra light. Can't talk enough about it. They do offer other lights on other cells. They're all single cell, so this is a single double A. They offer um, ones that take 18650 cells. I think they offer some that are just the CR123. Yep, yep. And generally speaking, all their lights are 69 to $89. 65 bucks like this was 65 when I bought it. It's currently on sale for 49 bucks. Oh, that's why I'm doing this review right now um, Honestly, I can't wait to buy more of these. I wish I wasn't such a poor college student, but Get yourself hooked up with one if you haven't heard about them and you like lights guys. You will not regret it. Peace out